Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. But see, John tells me something about how come there were so many people. The crowds, this is, this is a week before the Passover. Now in Jerusalem, people made pilgrimages to Jerusalem during the Passover season. They'd come from all over the world to be there for the Passover. And, but that's not why there was such a great crowd. John tells me why. If you'll turn with me to John's Gospel, the story about him riding into, into Jerusalem on the donkey is found in John chapter 12. But to find out about why there's so many folks attending this little parade, you have to back up to chapter 11 of John's Gospel. Because John's Gospel tells us a little insight that the other, the other Gospel writers don't tell us. And this is one of the ones that I find really builds my faith. I hope it will build your faith today when you hear this part. This is the part where the, there, there was a certain man, his name was Lazarus. Look at verse 1 of, of John 11. He was Lazarus of Bethany in the, the village of Mary, it says, and her sister, who? Martha. You guys heard of Martha and Mary? Martha, Martha, busy Martha, you know, she was always busy. Tell Mary to stop listening to you, Jesus, and come help me do the preparations. And Jesus said, Martha, you're always so worried about this stuff, but Mary has chosen the better part. She was sitting there listening to the, to the Lord's words fall from his lips. And it says, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the sisters, they sent word to, to the Lord. They said, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. But when Jesus heard this, he said, The sickness is not, not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. This sickness isn't, don't worry, it's, it's so God will get glory. The Son of God will be glorified through this sickness. Now, how many of you know the story? What happens in the story with the sickness? Jesus gets there, heals him, and he's well, right? I mean, I'm just a little test here. I'm looking to see who's... No, you're going, no, no, he doesn't. Verse 5 says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two days longer in the place that he was. He didn't like hurry and hustle over there while, while he's sick. He's like, he's sick, but it, it's going to be to glorify me. Don't worry. And... They, they understood, if we could get Jesus' attention, we already seen him heal people that are sick. He could certainly fix this. But Jesus, instead of coming rushing to fix it, what's he do? He stays two more days. Like, away. He, he doesn't hurry and come help. And you think, this is not a good approach. But it says then, as the time passed, they heard that, that he was sick he, uh, and he had stayed there. Verse 7 says, Then after this he, he s said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. And the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews that were just there, they, they were seeking to stone you, and you're going to go back? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? And if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. And he said this, and after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, and I go so I might awaken him out of sleep. And the disciples said to him, Well, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll recover. Now, does Jesus, Jesus isn't there, just like Jesus wasn't where the donkeys were. Jesus knew what was going on where the donkeys were. He knew they were tied up, and he said, Untie them and bring them. And Jesus says, um, Lazarus has fallen asleep. We got to go to him now. I got to wake him up out of his sleep. And they go, well, Lord, if he's sleeping, when you're sick and you're sleeping, what, what are they thinking? Good, you'll, you'll get better. You know, you're sleeping, your body recovers. And Jesus then spoke to them plainly. He said, <laughs> verse 13 says, he spoke not of sleep, but of his death. And they thought he was speaking of literal sleep. So Jesus then said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And he said, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, 
Now it tells us why. He says, so that, I'm not going to finish the sentence. You have to look. Verse 15. Why was he glad he was not there? Verse 15 of John 11. For those of you driving, listening to this later, don't try to open your Bible. I'll re I will read it for you. Just giving everyone here a chance to catch up. I was glad for your sakes that I was not there so that you may what? Believe. But let us now go to him. Now, what does he want them to believe? I want you to just keep that question in your mind as I read you the rest of this passage. What does he want them to believe? Do they already believe that he can heal the sick? Easy, right? Yeah, no problem. There you go. Listen, she said it, that he can not only do sick, but that he can raise the dead. This is the part that they didn't understand. See, verse 16 says, Therefore Thomas, who is also called Didymus, that means the twin. Some people refer to him as Doubting Thomas, you know, in the Bible. He said to his fellow disciples, Well, let us also go with him that we might die with him. Because remember, they just said, You want to go back to Judea? That's where they're trying to kill you. That's, that's where Lazarus was. And he's going, <laughs> Good old Doubting Thomas. Well, if, if we go there, if they're going to kill him for sure. We might as well go and... Well, die with him, you know. Fatalists, man, Eeyores in the, in the group, you know. Uh, might as well go die too. So when Jesus came, it says he found that they had already, that, <laughs> listen to this, that he had already been in the tomb for four days. By the time Jesus gets there, Lazarus has been in a tomb sealed up for four days, dead. They buried him four days earlier. And he gets there, and now it says Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. And Martha, therefore, when she heard Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed at the house. And Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Martha. In fact, I, I ask you the same question. Do you believe this? If you believe in the resurrection of life, Jesus, it says, Jesus says, if you believe in me, even he says, you will live even if you die. Everyone who lives and believes in me, Jesus said, will never die. Do you believe? See, when we're Christians and our heart stops beating in this body, we don't actually die. The Bible says we become absent from this body and then we are present where? With the Lord. So did I die or did I move? No. See, it's bad reporting. If you ever hear that Izzy died, you tell him, bad reporting, he didn't die. Because I, I won't die. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you'll never die. You, you will change addresses from this old tent of my spirit, this thing we call a, a body made by human effort. I get a new body, the Bible says, I'm upgrading to a mansion not made by, by man's hands, but made by God. There's an eternal body waiting for me, and Paul likens it to a mansion. This is a one of the alternate translations of understanding is that that mansion Jesus went to prepare is a heavenly body waiting for you. Anyone up for an upgrade? I'm going, man. This is, this is, Jesus said, do you believe this? If you believe in me, you will never die. You're just moving. Guys, it's a good day. The day my, my this, this tent gives up its strength because that's when this mortal, it says, this corruptible shell will be swallowed up by immortal, by incorruptible, a new body made by God. Now she answers him. Martha answers. She says to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, even he who comes into the world. And when she had said this, she, she went away and she called Mary, her sister, saying secretly, The teacher is here and he's calling for you. So when she heard it, she got up and she quickly went to Jesus. And Jesus had not yet come into the village. But he was still in the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house 
they were consoling her. When they saw that she got up quickly and, and she went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to weep. You know, oh, she's going to go weep by the tomb. She's bummed out. Therefore, when Mary came to where Jesus was, she saw him and she fell at Jesus' feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Deja vu. Who just said that? Martha, her sister. They both had the same understanding. Lord, if you would have been here. But Jesus said to his disciples, we're not going. Let's stay here a little few extra days. This is unto the glory of the Son of God, the sickness. It's not unto death. It's to glorify the Son of God. So when Jesus saw that she was weeping and the Jews that were with her also were weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come see. And then, if you're ever playing Bible trivia, this is John 11, 35, the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. He wept right there. And so the Jews were saying, see how, how he loved him. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of blind men have kept this man also from dying? Interesting. The question of the day was, Lord, why weren't you here? You could have fixed this. You could heal. You know, you, you did blind men. You could have taken care of this sickness. Why didn't you do it? And Jesus, again, being deeply moved within, he came to the tomb. Now it was a cave. There was a stone lying against it. And Jesus said, remove the stone. And Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to Jesus, Lord, by this time there'll be a stench, for he's been dead for four days. Like you have to inform the Son of God how um, decomposition works, you know. He's going to stink. He's been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not say to you, if you believe that you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I also said it so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now, who, who knows what happens next? I love this part. The man who had died came forth. It says, and he was bound hand and foot with wrappings. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. He comes. <laughs> I mean, he's tied. He's he's, this is how they prepared a body for burial. They wrapped with cloth and they poured spices like cinnamon and aloes and stuff in between each wrapping of the of rolling of the, like kind of how you make a mummy, you know, how you roll them up. You, you do that. It was to like keep the stink down. You know, the guy had died, and you, you get in his body ready. The girls had prepared him for burial. He's got it all the way wrapped, all the way around his face. I can just see, the, here comes Lazarus, like a mummy coming out. <laughs> Jesus said to come forth. I'm coming. Coming, Lord. I can't get out of this thing. I'm stuck. And he comes out, and Jesus, Jesus says to them, unbind him and let him go. Therefore, it says, verse 45, many of the Jews who came to Mary and saw what he had done, they believed in him. But some, it says, of the Pharisees, they went, they, uh, I'm sorry, but some of them went to tell the Pharisees the things which Jesus had done. And verse 47, listen to this. Now, this is where it gets juicy. Verse 47 says, And therefore the chief priests and the Pharisees convened a council. And they were saying, What are we doing? For this man is performing many signs. And if we let him go on like this, all men will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people, that the whole nation would not perish. Now, he, didn't, he did not say this on his own initiative, it says, but being the high priest that year, he was prophesying, that Jesus was going to die for the nation. And not for the nation only. Listen to this, verse 52. But in order that he might also gather together into, into one the children of God who are scattered abroad. Caiaphas actually prophesied. They were like, we got to kill this guy. He's getting too popular. He's healing everybody. And he's raising the dead now. Nothing's going to stop people from believing in him. But 
I can't believe this. Look at verse 53. So from that day on, the, this, is the chief, this is the chief priests and the Pharisees. From that day on, what did they plan to do? Kill him. Therefore, Jesus no longer continued to walk publicly amongst the Jews, but went away from there to the country near the, near the wilderness into a city called Ephraim. And from there, he stayed with his disciples. Now the Passover of the Jews was near, and many of, uh, of them went up to Jerusalem out of the country before the Passover to purify themselves. They were going to get ready to purify themselves for the Passover. So they were asking for Jesus, and they were saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think? That he will not come to the feast at all? I mean, if he's a, a rabbi, a teacher, he's got to come to the, the Passover. This is a, do, are the Jews supposed to attend Passover, by the way? For those that don't know their culture, this is an, one of the annual biggies. You, you have to go to Passover. So they're going, what? He isn't going to come? And the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders. If anyone knew where he was, they were to report it so that they might seize him. Now, chapter 12. This is where John gets into the story about Poem Sunday for us. But before he does, he gives away one juicy tip. It says, Jesus, therefore, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And so they made him a supper there. And Martha was serving, but Lazarus was one of those reclining at the table with him. And Mary took a pound of very costly pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the, the fragrance of the perfume. Remember when she anoints him? And Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples who was intending to betray Jesus, was, was saying, why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 denarii? And, and the money given to the poor. This is 300 days wages, almost a year, an annual income in this pound of perfume. This is how expensive this perfume was that she anointed him with. This is like something that you would have as your dowry saved up for your, your, your wedding. And she went and poured it on Jesus' feet. And Jesus said to, to, the, to this, he said, now Judas wasn't saying this because he was concerned about the poor, John tells us, but because he was a thief. And he had the money box and he used to pilfer what was put in the money box. One of Jesus' own guys was a thief. Now Jesus said to him, to him let her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. And the large crowd of Jews that had learned that he was there, they came, and verse 9 tells us, not only for Jesus' sake did they come. There's one other person they want to see. Guess who it is? You've heard this story. It's Lazarus, that's right. They want to see Lazarus, who was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And the chief priests, listen to this, verse 10, but the chief priests also planned to put Lazarus to death because on account of Lazarus, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. They're like, we can't even leave this guy alive because everybody's hearing the story about how he's dead for four days and now he's come back to life. And, and how did he come back to life? What happened? Um, Jesus went up to the tomb and said, roll that stone back. Lazarus, come forth. Good thing he didn't just say, come forth in a graveyard. What would happen? It'd all, everyone pop out of the grave, you know? I mean, when you're the son of God and you have power over death, you can just say, come forth. In other words, Jesus said, I have to go and awake him out of sleep. He's just sleeping. To Jesus, this is like waking someone up. No big deal. For us, it might be a, big, a little bit bigger deal. We don't usually think of waking people out of the dead, you know? Like, oh yeah, pop back to life, buddy. But when you're the son of God, you can, you don't only do sickness, you can do dead. You can literally say, dead, no problem, just come back to life. Boom. And the guy comes back to life. And because of it, the word's spreading. Tell me the truth. If you could go visit a guy who had been dead for four days, that Jesus brought back to life, who would get in line with me? to go talk to this fella? I mean, would any of you have questions? Like, so what was on the other side? Was it like a light or was it, a, you know, how, come on, who would go with me to ask? I'm telling you, this is a, this is a real crowd buzz. 
I mean, this would be, this would be, if we had social media back then, this would fly through the whole thing. Everyone, everyone and their brother would be there going, we got to go, we got to go meet this guy. This guy would be, I mean, what, how fast would he become an instant sensation? Gazillions of views, the multi-million views, you know, thing on YouTube, because they'd all be going, tell us, what was it like? You were dead four days. What's on the other side? You know, and because of this, and he's telling them. Who called him out? Did, did, did he know who called him back? Sure. It was his friend. He knew Jesus already. So he's telling them, Jesus called me from the dead. He brought me back. He woke me up. And because of it, listen to this, on account of him, verse 11, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. And on the next day, a large crowd who had come to the feast, when they had heard Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, they took the branches and the palm trees and they went out to meet him and they began to shout. Now John tells me they didn't just go, Hosanna. No, they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel, the King of Israel, right here. They're saying, Blesses he. It's him. And Jesus, John just tells us, Jesus, finding a donkey, sat on it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Now these things, these things they did not understand at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered these, that these things were written of him and that these things had been done to him. So the people who, who were with him when, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, they continued to testify about Jesus. And for this reason also, people went out to meet him because they had heard that he had performed this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see, you are not doing any good at all. Look, the whole world has gone out to him. Now, I didn't have time to take you to Luke's gospel, but in Luke's gospel, those same Pharisees were, were telling Jesus, you better tell your disciples to quit calling out Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The king of what? Israel. They're calling you king. You better tell them to stop. And Jesus answered them. He says, I tell you the truth. If they were to, to stop, what would cry out? He said, the very rocks would cry out. Because this has to be fulfilled. If they would, if they would just hold their tongue, the rocks would start crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. See, when God wants something to get fulfilled, if the people don't want to participate, he doesn't go, well, I can't do it then. I mean, they got the privilege to participate. Would anyone here like to have seen Jesus going in on a donkey? And, I mean, face it, you get a bonus. You get Lazarus too. So you, you get to see, right? I mean, would this be a good bonus day for your faith? I mean, you get to see the guy who was dead for four days and you get to see Jesus and you get to see Jesus chuck the money changers out of the temple. I mean, this is all in all a win-win for me. I mean, this would be a great day. If I only got to go back for one day, a time machine, I could go for one day. This is a pretty good day. I mean, because this day is a day where they didn't, didn't, okay, wait. Look at verse 16. Did they understand all the stuff going on this day? On, at, at the moment it was happening, did they understand it then? The answer is no. And who's writing that right here? John. Was John part of the story with Jesus? I mean, how big, a, how big of a role does he play in the whole thing, you know? Pretty big, right? I mean, coming just in a few days, they're going to have the Passover. And Jesus is going to show off again like he knows stuff they don't know. Like he's going to say, guys, go prepare the Passover for us so we could eat it together. This is my last, last meal with you guys. And just to show them that they get the right place. Because you can read this in the different Gospels. You might not pick up on this. But one of the Gospel writers, Mark. Mark tells us, and I, I kind of I kind of have a curiosity. See, Mark's Gospel, we know John Mark was a young man at this time. But the Bible tells us he's, he hung out with one of the apostles. His name was Peter. So Pete, this would be you in the story. And John Mark, he hung out with Peter. And Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website 
AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.